Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Triangular Talk session. My name is Shreya Kalyan, and I'm the CEO of Agora Math Circle. Triangular Talks is a forum for students to interact with and hear directly from industry executives across various companies and organizations about how they use STEM concepts and problem-solving skills in their day-to-day -day work lives. Triangular Talks will be a series of one-hour online Zoom sessions consisting of three parts, an introduction, a presentation, and a Q&A session. These talks will revolve around one central idea, the triangular method for solving problems. This method begins with a problem. From that, one gets innovation, which one will finally use to solve the problem. To help students connect the dots between classes and real life, speakers will be asked what they do every day and how they apply their knowledge of STEM and problem solving. This will introduce students to different industries and motivate them to nurture their problem solving skills and not give up. The most common question asked by students in my in any math class are, why are we learning this? Or when will we ever use this? This program will answer these questions and encourage students to take the initiative to learn and do more. Today, we are joined by Kirsten Malama. Kirsten is a principal quality engineer for Northrop Grumman, an aerospace and defense company. She's over six years of quality management system experience in the aerospace industry. She's also the founder for Girl, of Girls for STEM USA, a nonprofit organization that inspires, girl, inspires girls to do pursue STEM. She's a YouTube channel where she posts videos for, of her hosting panels with many talented people. So if you're interested in hearing more from her after the talk, don't forget to check it out. I had the opportunity to be on some of those panels. And as we were working with her to make this talk a reality, I had the chance to hear her story. Is truly inspiring, and I hope you guys feel the same way after hearing her talk today. She'll be talking about how nothing is impossible, something that is at the very center of Agora Math Circle. After the talk, we have a feedback form for you guys to fill out so we can see what you guys thought about today's talk. That being said, Kristen, thank you for joining us today, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Surya. It's nice to see you again. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I hope you are able to see me clearly. Um, my name is Kirsten Malama, and I'll definitely go dive into uh, my uh, sharing with you my experiences and my possibilities to be an engineer. So uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, today's agenda, sorry, I think I need to move this to something else, at least where everybody can see, maybe somewhere here. Okay, so today's agenda, I will introduce myself and then I will go ahead and talk about my journey from Africa. I was born and raised in Africa. And I'm going to talk about what I'm doing today. I would also like to share with you when did I get interested in STEM. I also want to share with you uh, challenges as an immigrant and how can you achieve your dream. And today, please feel free to engage me, but I would prefer maybe if all the questions are left at the end, but sometimes, you know, there are those questions you wanna ask and find out, you know, uh, what is it exactly? Please feel free to jump in. So as I mentioned earlier, my name is Kirsten Malama. I'm a principal quality engineer for Northrop Grumman. I'm also a CEO and founder for Girls for STEM USA. I graduated from California State University. I did manufacturing systems engineering. I really love this um, bachelor's because it helps me uh, to understand um, a lot of things around me compared to other engineering, but not to diss them. But you know, when you're, when you're just fond of, of your career, right? I also went to Glendale Community College. Uh, you know, when you come from straight from another country, first for you to enter in uh, United States system, you have to be screened, of course. So I went and took my prerequisite there, and then I started from there. 
However, previously, uh, coming from another country, I had gone and did a diploma in production management. And that was um, actually trying to uh, make sure I can understand my environment around me. But you know, when you're growing up back in Africa, it's very difficult. Um, we don't have those resources around us. But you know what, let me not preempt, let's dive into something that I wanna share with you. So if you can see on the right side, that's little me. Um, I don't know, could you guess how old I was there? Maybe three, four, I don't remember myself too. Uh, I wish I could ask my mom exactly, <laughs> uh, but yeah, and that's my older brother. And at the bottom there, that's me. Um, this time I'm about six, seven. Um, that's our home uh, back in Africa. So as I mentioned again, I was born and raised in uh, Zambia, Kitwe. And then I migrated to United States and here I am in Los Angeles. So when did I get interested into STEM? That's what I wanted to also, you know, one of my things I, I really wanna share with you. So when I was growing up as a little girl, I was really curious, just like most of you uh, and any other girls. And that's what I, you know, we always try to uh, speak to young ones to be curious. Every time I saw a plane flying, I was mesmerized. I wondered how was, how were those planes made of? Will I ever get on those planes? You know, who flies them? That really intrigued me. And also, the other part besides that, me and my brother uh, made a lot of toys. Uh, back in Africa, we don't have toys. Like we, we never had toys. When you go, you can go and buy those toys. So me and my brother, what we did, we would go by a nearby hill and fetch for those uh, soil, the soil that's long and soft, and then we'd bring uh, that home and would make um, a lot of gadgets. To my surprise, I made a lot of gadgets that were mesmerized. I mean, trucks, I would make roads. I just made a lot of things out of that. And I actually didn't know I was being wired, um, maybe to be an engineer, I don't know, but I was just mesmerized to be uh, physically, uh, you know, making different things. Unlike most kids, they want to make uh, baby dolls and maybe cooking things like that, but I made trucks, I made airplanes, I, I, I made, uh, a lot of gadgets during my uh, young age. And also the other thing is my dad was a farmer because remember I mentioned when we go to the farm, when I look in the sky, I would see planes, I would just mesmerize. Will I ever you know, be on a plane? And that was not even an option that I would ever get on a plane. But um, my dad was a farmer and I really got interested in farming and knowing you know, science. How do these plants grow? What makes them fertile? How can we make the land fertile? And back in Africa, we would burn trees. And I was interested, you know, uh, when we cut trees and you know, light fire and then the trees burn and then they leave that uh, ash. I wondered, you know, how does, how does this work? You know, but I was still young by that time. And um, as time uh, went by, I was also interested in computers, but guess what? There were no computers. And the only time I got to see a computer or to see a computer, it's when I went to college. So that leads me to show you uh, when I was at college. And guess what? This time you don't have access to the computer. The only time you go to see the to, to have access to the computer is when you're having a class. Uh, this is at college now. I was doing my college. Um, I was doing production management. Um, I, you know, the one I mentioned earlier on. And this time I'm writing my exams. It's my last uh, uh, two years because we went, I think, for about two, two and a half years. So this is a picture we got in the computer room. And on the other side, it's during my internship after we finished this college, I was attached to um, a company called Central Cigarettes. And this company manufactured uh, uh, cigarettes, unfortunately. And I was privileged, I worked with this engineer who uh, showed me how to redesign a conveyor belt. 
So you know what a conveyor belt is? It's a conveyor belt that carries, used to carry uh, um, uh, cigarettes from one place to another, and it used to go around for different processes. Um, make sure you, uh, you can connect where I'm coming from, because this is going to uh, tag into why I became a quality engineer. So now I redesigned this conveyor belt so it can be efficient. So I went and picked the, uh, the, the dimensions and, and you know, scaled them back to the drawing board. And that time in Africa, we were using uh, the T-square. I, I hope you know what the T-squares are. Uh, we didn't have the CAD computer aided design that you guys have today. There was nothing like that. So that's what I, I did an internship there. And it was very interesting. And it's kind of funny. I don't know how I made my face there <laughs> instead of laughing. But yeah, um, I got that. And it really changed my perception, uh, trying to understand what do engineers do, because I worked with an engineer. I graduated and I was very excited when I graduated and I started looking for a job. Remember, we're still in Africa by that time. And yes, when I started working, I had an opportunity to work not on a computer once in a while. I went in this room, I remember, I just went and sat, I said, please take me a picture, take a picture. Because we just need, we used to go to use a computer, rarely. There was a person who used to have that computer. But I remember I used to go there and work once in a while, but not all the time. So now I'm working as a uh, quality control supervisor. Yes, um, they used to make slime for the um, uh, panel for the uh, pan, uh, uh, wood panels. Those wood panels, they acted as a ceiling board. So they would use uh, fiber and they would use cement. So I actually was in charge to helping uh, these guys who used to go to uh, get samples from the process area. And I used to ensure that they are doing it correctly. So I was a supervisor, I was very young and I was supervising, um, I mean, people. So it was quite interesting for me to see that. But guess what? My mind wondered about my surrounding. I was so curious, how does the world out there look like? What is there? Uh, how can I get there, especially America? How can I get there? I would love to know more about science. I was so curious at this point in time. So guess what? I managed to land in the United States. And as I mentioned earlier, I went, earlier, I went to uh, Glendale Community College. I, I, I got an assessment. And after I got an assessment, I was placed in pre-calculus. I couldn't believe it. And the person who was... Um, um, giving me, administering the, the test. She was really excited. You passed calculus? I was like, I did? She's like, yes, you did. Are you excited? I was like, because I didn't know my future. So the reason I went there, because I was trying to see, can I pursue engineering? I really want to get into this engineering. I was so excited. And to cut the story short, this is a story for another day, guys. To cut the story short, I was privileged to, um, uh, to graduate in the United States. And this is where my journey begins. So I would like to show you one of my projects that I actually um, worked on after I, uh, I graduated, but hopefully I will be able to uh, play this. Let me know if you can see my screen. Uh, the that well. uh, 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 oh, I don't think we can see it. We just see your presentation. Are you able to see my screen? No, we cannot see the video. We only see the link from the presentation. Oh, okay. So I think that's the last You thing. need to share the entire screen. Uh, one second, what did you say again? There's a lot of noise. I'm not sure where the noise is coming from. 
I think that was part of the video, but yeah, we don't see the video, Kirsten. We only see the link from the presentation. So I think you can maybe share the entire screen, not just the presentation. Let me just really share so that I can show you. Yes. Let me see if you will be able to see. Um, are you still able to see it or no? No, try going back to the main PowerPoint, like where you can edit stuff and then use right click the link from there and open the link from that rather than when it's in presentation mode okay and then share afterwards right yeah Sorry about that. Let me just make sure I can. Or if you want, you can send the link to yeah, the I, chat and okay. then I can share it from my side. Yeah, I think that's what we need to so that we don't waste most of it. Okay, so that's the link. You guys can check it out. But I wanted to show you um, the project that I worked on. So let's move on. Let me share my screen again. We can see the video now. Oh, you can see the video? <laughs> that's interesting. Let me play. Okay. Okay, so that's the project I was working on. I was actually the team lead for that project. Um, okay. Let's stop it. Let me know if you can see my PowerPoint one more time. Yep, we can see it. Okay. So I just wanted to show you, uh, when I was at school, I was a team lead for the team of about five. And I managed from the scratch to uh, build that robot. You know, when the tennis player are playing tennis, they get tired. You don't want them to go and uh, start picking the ball. So that's the uh, uh, robot we created. And we actually won the uh, prize as the first, uh, 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 you know, as first. So that was interesting. I just thought of uh, sharing that as well. So, let me share some of the challenges and as an immigrant, um, those that we uh, that normally people go in. So particularly myself, as being an African uh, immigrant, I struggled with the notion that I am not good enough, and I was also scared to speak. 
And um, that really uh, traumatized me. So I had to think twice, how can I overcome uh, uh, this? So this is now how I decided, you know, to be very uh, friendly to people and also, you know, to network with other people. And I will give you a proverb. Uh, in my language, there's a proverb that says, on somebody's face, uh, there is no lion that can come out of, of that face to come and eat you. So you don't have to be scared to go speak to people, uh, to go network with them, even to greet them. Hi, how are you doing? You know, what's going on? How's school? Things like that, because that's the only way you're going to uh, uh, interact with other people. And also to know your perception and just to share things. So I made an effort. And that's why even today, I still now uh, talk a lot about YouTube, um, uh, which I will also just share the link as well, uh, just in case for time purposes. So uh, again, this is me uh, from a girl, a young girl from Lusaka, Zambia. And then I, you know, transformed to be speaking here in, uh, you know, United States, uh, talking to people, uh, sharing them about STEM. And uh, on this channel, I uh, interview so many engineers uh, how did they get to where they are? Because mostly parents and other kids are asking, you know, young ones, how can I be an engineer? You know, so now I go deeper to ask these engineers to, to share with uh, our viewers, how did they navigate their STEM? What was happening when they were little? Because I want to imagine myself the way you see the picture. I know what was going on during that time. Did it help me to get wired to become an engineer? That's what I wanted to confirm with uh, by speaking to other engineers as well. So this is also a clip I wanted to show you. Let me know if you'll be able to see. It. I'll take you back when you're. Are you able to see this one? Yes. Okay. So let me just. Growing up, I'll take you back when you are like five years old. What's going on around that age? I know you're young. You're a little bit young. Maybe five, six, seven. The reason I'm asking this question is because. We want to know how these engineers become engineers, how these doctors become doctors, how these um, technologists, innovators become innovators. So what's going on when you are about five, six, seven? What are your uh, um, uh, uh, things around you, your parents? What are you talking about on the table? Um, are you thinking about STEM or completely? It wasn't in your uh uh, curriculum, how were your behavior? I'll give an example. For example, I remember uh, I was born and raised. In I'll take you back when you. So, this is just a short for you. I'll also send uh, a link. Uh, feel free, you guys, to um, uh, go and watch this. I just wanted to show you um, how I became uh, where I am and also uh what inspired me to do that. So let me just uh, uh, put a, a link there. Okay. So let me know if you can see my screen again. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you so much. So this is um, how I, you know, started to network. And this didn't only just start um, after I completed. During my school time, I had to open up myself uh, because this is where you learn about others. And remember, we are not only best ourselves, but we need to learn from other people as well. And oh my goodness, I have learned so many things. I, I can't even imagine. So um, what do I do? Let's get into that. So my company uh, manufactures hardware structures, okay? These hardware structures unfold effortlessly in space. Uh, they are folded in a minimized uh, way so that they can be able to be fired in a rocket, right? When they get into space, they deploy in a kinematic, robust way. And when I mean kinematic, I mean Anyhow, you can think of a robot can do without restrictions in terms of angular, uh, 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 in terms of angular, because you know, when we move our arm, we move our arm in terms of angles, 15 degrees, 60 degrees, remember? So in a kinematic way, and robustness means um, in a very, oh my God, like 
perfect way. So um, I really, really love uh, where I work because uh, what we send to space also, you know, protects our troops. And it's just an, a, a good feeling when you work from there. And it also um, requires a lot of uh, details, um, a lot of um, uh, engineering, uh, uh, you know, craftsmanship. So I just wanted to point that out and then, um, you know, you have to be very passionate about this work and, um, you know, there are different types of endeavors that you can uh, work on. And Northrop Grumman is uh, specialized, of course, uh, for space missions. And remember when I was young, I looked in space and uh, I got to where I am today. So let's dive into uh, what kind of hardware structure. So this is a type of hardware structure. When I went to work there, I was like, what is this? That was my first question. So my boss, when I went to work there as a QE, so he explains, do you know what this does? This goes and deploys in space. And um, we've never failed ever since we started making uh, this stuff. I was like, really? What does it do? So I was really intrigued. And so this is the hardware structure that goes and deploys in space, okay? So what do I do particularly? So my job as a QE, my job as a QE, QE just means quality engineer. I monitor processes. What are processes? These are tasks that are being uh, 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 performed on. And those tasks, they mount to a system or a process. So my job is to ensure that these process, processes are running perfectly and that there are no issues. Why? We follow requirements we also have procedures that we write, right? We write procedures and my job is to ensure, are we following these procedures? Are we following requirements? There are also requirements that the government requires. So my job is to ensure that, you know what? We are following those uh, instructions. And now I also dive deeper into the actual meat the engineering are doing. I poke my nose in there to make sure that, you know, all the processes are pay requirement. I'll give an example, some of the wrongs that we do face uh, when we are uh, working on our stuff. For example, um, we ask our supplier, oh, please drill us uh, 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 the thread, uh, 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 make a thread for us, and we give them a depth, right? Then we try to put our insert there, it doesn't go through. We're like, what happened? Then we try to see if we can fix it, right? So I want you to see if you can pick what's going on there and what's happening wrong, okay? So we try to fix it. And when we try to fix it, then we don't fix it properly because we want the, uh, uh, when we screw this uh, inset, it goes uh, flash and deep, right? But then we find that when we try to clean, first we use a coolant, for example, to uh, make that thread pay our requirement, right? We have to use uh, coolant, we have to, we have to use, we have to go through uh, so many things for us to just, uh, because it has to be specific, specific. We also make mistakes. Remember here we are discussing how to solve problems in the industry. How do we do it? So I'm just trying to show you some of those examples and we mess it up because maybe we use um, a coolant that has got different um, um, uh, chemical composition. It's very, very important because you don't just want to pick a coolant because um, each chemical has got different types of reactions um, with other chemicals and materials. I'm speaking to chemistry uh, people and also people here in, in, who are doing STEM, right? <clears throat> so my job is to ensure where did we go wrong? How can we fix this? Why did it happen? Could you give me a plan how you are going to fix this problem? How are you going to ensure that we, first, I will also talk to um, our suppliers. So I will be talking to the suppliers. I'll be also talking to the people internally. How did we have this issue? How did we um, um, flow down our requirements? Uh, what do I mean by that? How did we 
um, right to our suppliers exactly what to do. So once for me, it's, I'm very good to uh, uh, notice that and also to ensure how the process should will be fixed. And then I'll be uh, waiting for the engineers. I'll be doing my fit like this. I'm like, okay, let's see how we're going to fix it. And then they're going to present a plan to myself, uh, to me. And then I'll look at it and approve it. And then I will monitor it to ensure that they fix it the requirements, I'll look at the details of the drawing, I'll look at the thread depth, I'll look at, I'll look at a lot of things to ensure that we have a perfect uh, uh, screw fit in there. So that's just some of the examples I wanted to share with you that we work on. So we go through a process of um, uh, assembling a team um, having meetings, we define what's the problem. How did we go wrong? Um, root cause analysis, they call it root cause analysis. And then we look at all the root cause analysis. Then we try to uh, um, identify which one is the main one. Because for every problem, you know what? There are so many problems. So we try to fix the main one. Then we go to the uh, little, little ones. So I wanted to share with you, um, why should you pursue engineering? you know, to understand a lot about our environment. Space, to go to space exploration is one of the, our environment. And remember, space exploration uh, has given us so many benefits. Uh, I can mention, you know, a lot in medicine, um, in comfort, just here on earth, how we should be in comfort. There's so many things that has helped us uh, uh, just going to, uh, uh, to space. So there are so many reasons why should you why sh why should you should pursue engineering. Uh, it changes um, people's lives, and um, just to understand our existence as well. I wanted to show you one example of uh, space exploration that's mesmerizing. Um, this is the James Webb Telescope. I'm not sure if you've heard about the James Webb Telescope. And um, this James Webb Telescope was also, um, you know, Northrop also was a participant in uh, manufacturing this uh, endeavor. And this telescope is in space. It's mesmerizing for me. Remember, I'm passionate about space uh, mission and space exploration. Um, this telescope is able to see about 13 billion years when the Earth uh, approximately was just being uh, made. So we will be able to see a lot of things that pictures just started coming up. I actually went to see it before it was uh, flown into space. And it will bring a lot of information. Do you want to be part of it to see what's going on there? I think it's just mesmerizing for me. And this is the biggest ever telescope that has been made. How did I become successful in what I do? I like uh, mentioning them as superpowers. Each one of you has superpowers. I'm sure by the time I'm talking, uh, uh, you, your superpower just popped up in your uh, forehead. I can guess that. Um, one of the superpower I'll talk about is uh, being able to collaborate people. That's a superpower, guys. Um, it's very powerful because it helps you drive uh, goals, being a leader, um, you know, and you should be able to know that you are good at that. Why should you be able to know about your superpower? Because this is how you sell yourself. You have to know, <clears throat> sorry, you have to know what you're good at to be able to articulate it to someone else, right? But it's not always that we're able to articulate well what we're good at, but this is why we work on it. We try to explain it even on our resume and things like that. So how can you get to your goal? I wanted to uh, uh, explain a little bit about that. You have to be kind to yourself first and to your team or friends. You have to uh, help other people um, achieve their goals as well, because in doing that, you also learn a lot of things that helps you uh, get to your goal. Trust me on that one. The other one is to be confident. Confidence is needed too, uh, to be a leader and also just to feel good about yourself, right? 
And you also need to be determined because I'll tell you something, you will fail as you go on in life. But guess what in, in engineering, what failure means? That means if you made a left turn, you know, do not ever go to a left turn. Then you have to go to the right. So when you fall, you get up. That's all I did. I failed many times. But guess what? Now I know. Once you're determined, there is nothing that can stop you. And I keep telling that to my son as well. Do not be afraid to speak up. Try to make friends, network. And for me to keep my networking as well, that's why I also have a YouTube. And I speak to so many engineers. That helps me grow. That's helped me uh, uh, keep, on my, uh, uh, keep my toys up. Uh, you know, knowing what's going on in my environment, my world, that has really, really helped me out. And always be passionate about your, your dream. You have to be passionate, keep talking about it. Why do you have to keep talking about being passionate about it? Because you have to also be looking for uh, that blue rope. I always call it a blue rope. What is a blue rope? You know, you have to ask, did you see a blue rope? Because when you ask if you saw a blue rope, someone who saw that blue rope, someone who saw that resources, someone who has seen how to get to California State University Northridge, they will tell you, oh, the blue rope, the one that is um, two centimeters diameter, um, you know, five centimeters long. Yes, I think I saw it there. That's how you get your resources. You have to be passionate about talking about it. I want to be like this. How do I get it? And that's what I did. And finally, I got to my goal. I'm still uh, uh, learning. I'm still getting to my main, main, main goal. I'm not yet there, but that's how you get there. It's to uh, try to create that environment. And it's only you who can create that environment that helps you thrive. And then you will, your dream will come true. And remember, this is a land of opportunities in here where we are. So why am I passionate about STEM? First, let's talk about big things. STEM unlocks the future economy. I think that we all agree, right? When we invent, when we innovate, we create jobs. You know, the economy just starts blossoming. So that's really good. STEM, is a, STEM provides very high paying jobs and it changes people around. It will change your life, trust me. You know, STEM also, it, through innovation, it makes our lives better. There are few women in STEM. And when I was going to school, I stumbled. I never saw anyone who looked like me, who, um, had, who was working, who looked like me. That really scared me. So I had to think, how can I help others um, get to where I am? Because I remember how I felt. And I want to you know, preach it out until my, my saliva dries to say, this is how you get there. This is how you go. And finally, you will get to... Um, you know, to, to that place. And that's why I'm passionate about uh, encouraging uh, uh, kids, uh, you know, women to pursue STEM. I personally, I pursued engineering. Remember, I'm coming from uh, Africa as an immigrant. When I was already let, after I was above 35, that's when I started thinking about pursuing STEM. Can you imagine? So I want women out there that they can pursue STEM you know, anytime. I also want to share with you, how can you brand and build yourself, especially in, in this career? So the first thing is, you know, this is a land of opportunity. Here in America, anyone can be whatever they can, they want to be. You know, you can be anything, anything that you want. Think about it. Whatever you have today, whatever you're thinking about today, it can come to fruition. And the only thing you have to do is believe in yourself. I believed in myself when I was back as a little girl. I knew there is something out there and I found it, yes, because I imagined what is there? How can I be part of that? It was an impossible thing. When I thought about it at that time, 
I mean, tell me why it should be possible at that time. Because my environment and all the arrows around me are not pointing to today. But guess what? Here I am. And that's why I would like to encourage everyone that believe in yourself in everything that you're doing. And later in life, you'll see um, dots start adding up. Every time one dot, it leads you to another dot. One dot leads you to another dot. And that's how you get your impossibilities become possibilities. And we always say the sky is the limit, right? The sky is not the limit. So you can do anything. Remember, I think the James Webb Telescope has told us that the sky is not the limit. Because we think, we look in the sky, I'm like, oh, it's just here. But the James Webb Telescope is able to tell us that there is something beyond what we thought was. And for this generation, I would like to encourage you that find out what's there. Uh, this generation may go away, but your generation will find out exactly. So we are setting you up for you guys to go and do engineering, science, and mathematics. So you can find out what's our existence, why are we here, and what's out there in space. I've come to the end of my session. Any questions for me? Yes, uh, there's a question that says, have you been working on any projects re uh, recently? Yes. So recently, <clears throat> I just moved, <coughs> sorry about that. Recently, I just moved from one unit to another. So I'm just learning in my new position and nothing to, to show off at the moment. I'm in the learning process and just um, understanding uh, my new uh, facility where I just joined. So uh, that would be very interesting. Yeah, and thank you so much for asking me that question. <laughs> Hi, while we're waiting for the audience to ask additional questions, maybe I can start uh, another. Um, what are maybe one or two things that students can do on a day-to-day -day basis to, to sort of um, incorporate what you just shared, which is dream big, be confident, be curious. Those are great. Um, anything, any suggestions from you on, on a day-to-day -day basis, one or two things that they can do? Yes. The most important thing is, of course, everybody says be curious, be curious all the time. We know that, right? Guess how you can be even more curious each day. Try to read a lot of things. Um, I wake up in the morning sometimes, uh, five, I just wake up, I've got nothing to do. I know people, oh, you take your phone, you take your phone. I go on the NASA website, I'm reading, wow, this is what they're doing, cool stuff. You know, so whenever you have a chance, I know students are very busy all the time, but um, uh, you know, make sure you can read, keep yourself, uh, you know, trying to understand your world around you. There's so, so many things that you can learn, not only in your field. Remember, try to learn in other fields. Why should you try to learn in other fields? Because as a STEM major, you will be able to innovate from other fields by looking at what they're doing. Then you'll be like, hmm, how can I change their lives? How can I improve on their lives? Just by looking, for example, you're looking in a health sector. I'm going to talk about, uh, for example, women go through menopause, right? And they get so hot. Then by looking and reading about menopause, how women uh, go through, guess what you can think about? How can I create maybe a dress that is so cool? Whenever a woman feels so hot, maybe she just presses a button and then her dress feels her so cool, you know? It's just an example. Um, you know, there's so many things you can think of. For example, I remember one time I was looking at the vehicles. I'm like, hmm, 
how can we make it that vehicles start communicating from one another? And I was so surprised. Yes, they already started thinking about that, about uh, V2V uh, uh, technology. It's called a vehicle to uh, uh, vehicle technology where vehicles can uh, communicate to each other. And these are going to, of course, put it into um, a technology for the next generation. Make sure you read about that. It's called V2V technology when you Google it up. So that's why you should keep uh, yourself busy. Of course, don't take away from school, but every time you have that chance, that's a little step knowing um, something each day all the time. Um, I have somebody say something. You can share any interesting moments from your various interviews with engineers in uh, YouTube. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Let me share one with you. Um, there is, a, I asked one of the um, engineers, I said, how did you become an engineer? He said he used to watch a, uh, um, on Discovery Channel when he was little. He used to watch a, a, a documentary called Stupid, Stupid Engineers. I was even saying, are you serious? Yeah, he says a stupid science, something like that. So they used to do a lot of funny things. You know, sometimes they would hurt themselves or things like that. That triggered him to become an engineer. That was kind of interesting um, just to share with you, yeah. Uh, let me see what else is there. What was your favorite thing you created or helped make? Hmm. What would I say now? I think um, to make uh, the process efficient, I think uh, that's one of the uh, 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 Thing that I, 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 I would say I helped out. For example, when you do internal audits in a company, trying to audit how the engineers are working, right? You need a process of uh, auditing how you can follow up with them. So I, I created uh, a way of auditing them and a way of interacting with them because they're human beings and some of them are higher than me. So I created a way of you know uh, ensuring that they are working on the uh, products consistently and uh, you know working on those tasks so that they can be complete and I can check for verification of effectiveness that it's working properly. So I think that was interesting. Uh, so I just revamped uh, the process and the efficiency of it so that you know they could they were working on them because previously it was very hard for them to be reminded to be working them. So, so I created that environment where they were free to talk to me, ask me questions at any time if whatever they're doing is okay. So I think that uh, 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 that that's what I would say. Thank you, Kirsten. Would you also share a little bit more detail about that, that robotic project that you worked on? It looked pretty cool in, in the video. Um, what challenges you faced and um, yeah, just any interesting moments there would be great. Wow, thank you so much. Um, yes, there were so many challenges uh, during that uh, time of, uh, you know, making that robot wow that takes me back to how it was so as being a woman number one it was very challenging even when i i presented to the uh, uh sometimes to the professor because you could see they want more details what do you mean what do you really mean that you'll be able to uh you know to do this project so we had to go and do a lot of calculations remember the robots look simple but we did a lot of calculations, uh, the motor power, uh, the angular, uh, you know how it's turning, the distance to sense um, uh, someone when it, if you saw how it was moving when it hits a, 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 any object, it's, it turns. So we had to go back and do those calculations. It was a challenge, but later on, remember we won, right? But it was a challenge. We felt like, why are they not understanding us? We were two girls in there. You know, that was a little bit challenge. And then the other challenge was managing people. It's not easy to manage people. Sometimes, you know, they they were hard to coordinate. But you have to have that skill and need to be able to uh, uh, manage people, to give them assignments. And, uh, you know, the way you talk to them, the way you address them, that's really, really challenging. You have to know how to address for people to be happy in your group. So that was uh, some of the challenges that we made. And the other challenge we had was um, our capacitors uh, blew off just before 
the, the, the presentation. And the good thing we did, I've kept this video because when the, right away when the uh, robot started working, we took a shot and video. But when we went to the presentation, that robot, the fuse just burst. Can you imagine? I was really sad. So we couldn't present it right away to show how it was working. Because guess where we were buy, buying our capacitors, all the little, little things that we were buying for the project, we were buying them from uh, China. So we couldn't uh, uh, bring them on time. So that was some of our challenges while building the robot. Oh, and then I see, <clears throat> I see there's a question, what are the math concepts that you use in your regular jobs? Yeah, um, where the insets are concerned, I remember I showed you about insets there. The insets have got angular, um, a lot of ang uh, angles, edges, uh, you know, depth. So we use a lot of math tolerance to uh, calculate all uh, pre uh, the torque, how much torque, uh, torque is force uh, when you're screwing that, um, that uh, screw inside the, 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 your material or product. Uh, there is a, a amount of force you should use to turn that uh, uh, a screw to go in there. How much depth? So there's a lot of calculation of math. So you have to have a lot of mathematics uh, behind to understand what's going on. Not really calculating problems, but you will use the math concept to understand what's going on and use your visual uh, 3D uh, process to see how it's sitting there. How are the screws? What are the pitches, uh, the distance between the pitches? Are they true? Can we measure them? Uh, what kind of software can we use to measure these? So yeah, we use a lot of math. So Kirsten, you had mentioned that um, space exploration has actually helped us advance in, advance in medicine too. I was curious about that because I couldn't connect the dots. So would you maybe <laughs> help? Oh my God, don't even start me on that topic. <laughs> I really, really love it. Yes, um, I will talk about first uh, blood pressure medications. Uh, in space, when people go in space, they also check their blood pressure, how it's regulated, including age. I may not go, I'm not a scientist, but yes, they do help us understand how, what, how medicine is working there in, in space. And also companies are trying to sponsor a lot of uh, people. Remember before only few people can go into space. They used to pick people who can go to space, but now anyone can go to space and companies want to understand, can we send someone who has this disease? How are they going to behave when they go to space? What can we learn from that? Um, a lot of things like that. And the other thing is um, also operating on someone. Did you know that the robot that can operate on someone precisely, they first discovered while trying to help the people in space because they want to help them and operate on them when they're in space, right? Because there are no doctors there. There won't be a lot of doctors there. So if something goes wrong, they are researching. How can we help? Now, that has helped us have telemedicine. Um, uh, it's helping us uh, having to virtual treat someone when you're not there. Did you know that, um, everyone? You can treat someone. You can operate on someone. That's what they are doing, uh, going into research. But all these things it's because of trying to go to space. And the other thing I'll talk about, it's the comfort of the uh, astronauts there in space. That's how they developed the foam mattress. Make sure you read about all this that I'm talking about. You'll be mesmerized. A lot of things that um, have been um, discovered due to wanting to go to space. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Right. If there aren't any more questions, maybe we can wrap up and even give a few minutes back. Not not a lot, but still. Firstly, uh, Kirsten, thank you so much for taking the time to be here this morning on a Saturday morning. And of course, to the audience as well, 
uh, for for spending their time with us this uh, this morning. It was really really inspiring and um, heartening to hear your journey and to hear about your curiosity and how you made toys with clay and just um, it, it was again um, and and your. <clears throat> encouragement to dream big and be confident and be curious. And you you provided a few tangible things that, that students can do. And reading, you know, I've read about reading quite a bit, but I, <laughs> you know, it's hard to make time to read, but, uh, you know, fully uh, recognize and acknowledge how important it is. And even your example of how you were creative and flexible when your capacitor fuse burst, right, before the competition. <laughs> and your thoughtfulness in terms of having a video and maybe putting it in front of the judges and, you know, not thinking about, okay, it, it's it's done now because it's burst and we can't show it to them. That's wonderful. And and the fact that you won is sort of testament to that. So thank you for sharing all of that with us today. It's it's very inspiring, very encouraging. And also the nuggets about space. I, I couldn't connect the dots and now, yeah, I, it all makes sense, everything that you shared. So thank you so much. And I think... Um, Shreya has, has uh, put in the, the uh, survey, link to the survey on, on chat. So please do take a moment to fill out the survey and let us know, um, you know, how you like the talk and what else would you like to see? This is, you know, more for the broader audience. And I want to take the opportunity to thank Lisa, Andrew, uh, Shreya and Kalyan, of course, for all of the behind the scenes work that goes into, you know, making these uh, sessions come to life. So thank you all. Uh, thank you again, Kirsten, for taking the time. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for having. I really enjoy uh, such talks. They help me grow. Even just pre uh, preparing the PowerPoint was so encouraging to me. You don't even know. I realized uh, so many things that I've been going through. Sometimes when people talk to you, that's when you realize um, just how your life has been. And you helped me bring it out and to share with me. It's just a uh, privilege. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you all and have a great weekend. Bye.